from Chicago's Can TV. A look at the week's events is reported in the newspapers, in the blogs and online, and on radio and TV. This is Chicago Newsroom. Well, hi there. Welcome to the show, our first show of the great year 2014. So where do you stand on Mayor Emanuel being out of town as the snow fell? There's a pretty good chance that if you like him, you'll forgive him. And if you're not, it's just another example of plutocratic, out-of-touch aristocrats who don't care about the suffering of the small people. Should Mel, uh, Miguel Descoto be uh, getting his job back, running UNO? He thinks so. And what about Al Sanchez? Should he get a seat at the county board? Say what you will about him in all those years he ran Snow Command. He never jetted off for family vacations in Indonesia in the middle of the winter, <laughs> did he? Oh, and charter schools. Can't say Ben Jarofsky didn't warn you that after Barbara Bird Bennett finished closing all those schools that she'd find a way to open up a bunch of charters. Well, Ben's here today, so he can talk about that for himself. And as we try to put yet another year into some perspective, we're also joined by our old friend Tom Clark, who's here from Community Media Workshop. Tom. Great to be here, Ben. We should say for the record that you work for the August Chicago Reader. Ben, welcome to the show. Welcome back. It's been way too long since you guys have been on the show. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a perfect time to have you come in and fix things in time for us and tell us what 2014 is going to be like and what you're looking for, what you're looking at. Um, I just jotted down a bunch of stuff that I think uh, are, are interesting issues. And of course, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, polar, um, what do you call <laughs> thing, is, is everything. Uh, vortex. The, vortex. Which is, happens to be in this room right yeah, now. Yeah, right. It's swirling above us. Yeah, I think I just speak. saw a polar bear walk by. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is the 30th anniversary <coughs> of CAN TV, and, and uh, you know if you've watched this show for a while that I'm a major fan of CAN TV. Uh, a lot of absolutely fantastic stuff happens here every single day, and um, lots and lots of people get jobs by watching CAN TV and looking at the boards and uh, I'm proud to be a part of Can TV. Having said that, I knew something was coming. <laughs> you think, like, think they could put some heat in this room, wouldn't you? It's the only TV studio in America that has no heating plant. But yes. but we, but, you know, come on, we're well, Chicago ones. Yeah, the right. lights were supposed to take yeah, care of it. Yeah, I know, right? right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway. We're all Chicago ones. We can handle yeah. a little bit of cold. It's At least it's warmer in here than it is outside. That's so. true, a little bit, yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> there has been, Tom, you, you mentioned earlier, there has been a little bit of chatter around town about the usual grumbling about Streets and Sand not doing the job they were supposed to do. And people have not, Streets and Sand people have not shown up and shoveled my front porch, and I don't know why, and I don't what's wrong it, with it's this. It's been thing. a whole week, right? Right, right. And, and they have not come. Right. Um, I, I have caught uh, both with the earlier snow, but particularly with this one, uh, and it's lefties on my Facebook feed for the most part. I'm not using that word in a pejorative way, uh -huh. but they're, I think, uh, salivating over the fact that this might be what does Rahm in. Oh, come on. And I don't think so. This they, is not they, Mike Belandic. No, no, no. And, and, and uh, Indonesian vacations notwithstanding, um, um, this was a complicated snowfall. It was. In bitterly cold weather, mm -hmm. and main streets always get plowed first, and side streets sometimes. They mm -hmm. kind of hope and wait that the, the salt, which we always get too much of in yeah. our environment right. this time of year, um, and traveling out to my mom's in the what, near western suburbs, I've seen this huge pile of salt for the last two years outside Reed Zone Center, mm -hmm. Forest mm -hmm. Reserve Drive, right. um, kind of stay <laughs> you know, it gets covered up and then yeah. it gets opened up and, yeah. and, and suddenly it's down to like a quarter yeah, yeah. of what it's been for the last three years. Right. This has been a significant early winter. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm not looking to do any, you know, big praise for the mayor, but on this one, I think it's kind of a weak case at this point. Well, I think it ties into the uh, vacation about which our friend Mr. Jarofsky <laughs> has written just within the last 24 yeah. hours. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I mean, look, that's what you hire top flight professionals to do is yes. to is to manage this these operations and i don't know it seems to me that um i actually think that that pretty much since the the jane byrne administration the streets and sand snow command has just become slowly more and more professionalized over the over the years and it pretty much i'm not going to say it runs itself but it pretty much has a a, a game plan, and, and they pretty much stick to it. I, yeah. I, I, I actually think, I gotta say, 
it's one of those things I think the city does a really good job with. I, I, I got no complaints. People don't get alleys and side streets plowed as quickly as they'd want to, but the right. moment that would happen, you would then get the stories complaining about, I just cleared out my mm -hmm. apron outside right, my garage right, right. and now it's filled up with snow Ooh. again. Or and you, you do my dip spot <clears throat> has been covered by... Right. You, you do have to be of a certain age to remember what it used to be like. Yes. I mean, and not that long ago, 20, 25 years ago, when you were just on your own and, you know, the buses would be at a 45 degree <laughs> angle across diversity <laughs> and that's it. And so anyway. Yeah. Well, it actually wasn't too long ago in February 2011 when Lake Shore Drive shut down. Well, that, that is absolutely um, and, right. And that right. was one that got out of control, right. but right. that was a pretty massive all at once mm -hmm. snowfall. Right. And again, I, 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 God, this sounds like the Ken Davis apology for the city <laughs> show, but you know, I think that I think that the city learns from these things, and and uh, I don't know, it's just it, it's there are plenty of things to criticize, but but that one, I think I think we do a pretty good we do a pretty yeah, good it's job. not like any of us were out there shoveling, yeah, and it's really. certainly Mayor Rahm wasn't out there shoveling. So I don't know why we give him credit for any my, of this stuff. I just caught myself doing that. It's like it's like listening to all the coverage of the Bears game or no, something, where so, people say we really we really lost that one. It's yeah. like, no. We didn't he, didn't he didn't do anything. anything. Yeah. He didn't do anything. <laughs> you guys, no, I love both of you dearly. Uh -huh. You're two of my best friends in the entire universe. Uh -huh. But the bar is so freaking low in this town. <laughs> the train is running. Oh, my God. Thank well, the mayor. Well, the CTA. <laughs> yeah. The Metro wasn't oh, running very well. God. And the Amtrak totally shut down. The, the, this, like, I those, think there's those still people in Union Station. <laughs> budget budget hearings they used to have for Mayor Daly in the glorious days when we had budget hearings. Yes. And the remember, one lady I remember would, that there used to be they budget, budget hearings. They would yeah. praise her for the sun rising. You know? right. the, sun, <laughs> the sun rises are so much more beautiful since you've been mayor. It's like you know, Stalin's Russia or something. Oh my God! There was a plow. I have noticed that the sunrises are not as as not as good since <laughs> Nothing's Mayor Daly. Nothing's good right? since Mayor Daly. Left. It must be global warming. <laughs> it's got to be something. This like studio that. is colder yeah. since Mayor Daly left. All right. So I mean, really, I I, I don't I, I don't want to pick on you too much, Ben. But go ahead. I, I thought I thought you were. You were being actually a little unreasonable uh, in your in your criticism of the mayor for being on a family vacation that had been planned for a long time, and you know, this is this is one of these interesting comparisons between the Rahm Emanuel administration and the previous administration yeah. because the previous mayor, part of his persona, part of his way of doing things was to have you believe yeah. that he was out there 24 hours a day driving around and on the phone and making these commands yeah. to people like, uh, look, I'm at, I'm at 34th and Union and there's uh, there's six inches. That's not true. Well, okay. You can you can be in he Indonesia. He spent a lot of yeah. weekends in Grand Beach. That's right. Yeah. You can a be lot in of Indonesia in and run the, and okay. be the mayor of Chicago. Okay. First of all, in my defense, <laughs> did not criticize the mayor for taking a well-deserved vacation in Indonesia, wherever he went. Okay, or wherever um, it was, right. My criticism of the mayor was of this bizarre school open and school right, close right. setup, which completely contradicted the message that the rest of the city was sending out. Mm -hmm. um, so for instance, we knew uh, last week that there was this cold front coming, uh, which is apparently is settled in this studio, as I may remind you again. <laughs> and, uh, he won't so, get off that. No, no. He just won't so, get off it. <laughs> uh, so we all knew it was coming. And on Saturday, in fact, uh, the city, to prove your point, without Mayor Rahm's right. presence, we're schlepping out various experts to go on TV to say, don't leave, stay indoors. Mm -hmm. If you're outside for more than five minutes, you're instantly going to have frostbite. <laughs> right. And then yeah. have the meteorologists explaining, you know, here it comes, look out, duck. The process of the death process. And how it happens yeah, how so it happens. quickly. Right? And then in the next breath, oh, by the way, the schools <laughs> will be open. Like, what? And so the point I was making is that it was obviously a political decision a calculated political decision by Rahm's handlers who were barely running the city that, you know, what would make the mayor look best? Mm -hmm. So this is generally how things run in Chicago now. I mean, thank and God Rahm doesn't control the <laughs> snow plows because then they would just, you know, They would be waiting forever for that call to come from, come from the or, or, or this, Indonesia or, or wherever it was coming from. So like, it, would the mayor look best if the schools were open uh -huh. or would the mayor look best if the schools were closed? If Rahm Emanuel did control the snow plows, do you think he would, he would give preferential treatment to some wards over others? Well, he'd be, the problem with that is that I live in his ward, or he lives in mine. I was there first, he was there after I got there. So that would mean he would have to hurt himself because he would go after, the first guy he would yeah, go after yeah. would be me. 
<laughs> um, so, uh, but yes, no, I, so no, that was my criticism of it. It's just like his school policy in general is so bizarre. It, it, mm -hmm. it contra completely contradicts it to another. It's actually laughable that you would send kids out into this freezing so, cold. So was it the, the uh, statement from, from uh, Karen Lewis? Is that what changed it? I mean, I think they would have you believe it. It's uh, like all of a sudden the CTU says, wait a minute, this is crazy. Yeah. You should close the schools. And within about a half an hour, Barbara Burr Bennett is saying, oh, we're going to close the schools. I, I it's think, not because they said I, so. Yeah, and of course not. <laughs> I think, I think that's, that's part of it. I think what happens um, is that the mayor has from, by the way, Karen Lewis was on the show with our first show. Yes. Just the thought of that reminded me. Three and a half years ago. It was ago, warm yeah. in those days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> um, but uh, it was three and a half years ago. Was mm -hmm. that one? Okay. Yeah. But yeah, the, uh, Mayor Rahm is locked into this battle with Karen Lewis that he can't seem to uh, extricate himself from. Mm -hmm. He can't seem to be able to call her up and let's go have coffee. Well, he'll extricate him from it because he's gradually making every school in Chicago a non-union yeah, school. So school. that's, he, that's yeah. his, yeah, his plan. Yeah, he's his vengeance. He's it's, in for the long haul. It's Doug, it's his equivalent of Christie, you know, closing lanes in the Fort <laughs> Lee. Oh. So, um, so yeah, it's a, it, it, she was the one who really brought it to everyone's attention how absurd this is. You know, it's like the emperor has no clothes. Mm -hmm. So she sent out a tweet, I think it was on Friday or Saturday, and then she followed up with other tweets, and suddenly the, 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 the TV stations are covering her tweets, and the mayor, wherever he was, is on a cell phone going, <laughs> we gotta, what do we gotta do? Let's take a poll, let's see. Why? I, I, I think that the whole dynamic was clearly someone at CPS waiting for someone at City Hall to say yay yeah, or nay. Yeah. I mean, it just had that feel because everyone mm -hmm. else had made the decision at that point. Now, in a minor defense, um, as someone who lives at Columbia College, which also made a late decision after DePa and, and DePaul, many other schools had already made the decision. I think part of it is that some of these schools, including CPS, this is the first day back after a two-week break. Mm -hmm. wait, wait, I, guys, it, it, look, it, I'm dying to defend the mayor on something. <laughs> How could you compare a university I, with a grammar school system? Or my, my point is that they all waited until fairly late on Sunday before they announced they were actually closing. But did they reverse themselves? No, they did not did reverse they set themselves. Out a, they just a, held a, off and waited until kind did of Did they hold the a game. press conference where they were saying on one hand, People, don't leave no. your homes because no. you'll instantly freeze. You're absolutely right. And then say at the same breath, oh, but school children venture out into this cold. Because that <laughs> bus will come. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, oh, yeah, the bus will be there. Could you yeah. introduce a topic that I could defend, Rom, <laughs> so we can stop trying to defend them <laughs> of things for which uh, there are, is no defense? Let's see. Uh, no, that, no, no. <laughs> hey, um, Frank Thomas got uh, in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Good job, Rom. This is great wintertime news. Uh, uh, it's Bruce nice Rahner to think about. Bruce wants to raise or to lower the minimum wage <laughs> by a dollar. <laughs> the mayor is against that. Are you on the same Another side with the mayor? Another flip-flop. It's a flip-flop week. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Now I'm, now I'm going to defend Bruce Rauner. How about Are that? you really? <laughs> no. Um, <clears throat> but I think that was a, a, a case very similar to Rom, where he got, <laughs> he got caught in a very embarrassing <laughs> position. But what his clarification is, here I am defending Rauner. How about that? Yeah. I, that I'm, what I give it a try. He, he didn't mean that uh, the minimum wage... Uh, throughout the country should be reduced a dollar. Right, right. It should be reduced a dollar in Illinois, and then throughout the country should be raised to $10. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, well, I, that came later. I tried, okay. That came later. Yeah, yeah that came yeah. later. There right. was a month between those two <laughs> right. statements. And that was only because it, it, it had been, he had said this on a small radio yes. station, that, and it didn't get out until... Your sister paper, I guess, was the first one to pick it out, right? That's the right. Sun Times ran the quote, uh, which was, "We should yes. take it down a dollar." Yeah. But isn't that an interesting indication of how much this raising the minimum wage discussion has become more public and has really shifted Very in a month? Point. It is from where he thought he could get away mm -hmm. with a casual statement right, right. on a small market radio station, right, right. only to have it come back and haunt him. Mm -hmm. And not only did he have to flip his. <laughs> comment mm -hmm. i'll accept your explanation yeah. of it yeah. but he's now suddenly on the right. bandwagon no, he's all for, not yeah. for a 15 dollar yeah. but yeah. a 10 dollar yeah. yeah. minimum wage yeah. uh yeah no it's uh uh in fact uh i believe uh mayor emmanuel has also come out for increasing the minimum wage mm -hmm. uh, he followed up uh president Obama. everybody's for increasing the minimum wage just don't, they just don't seem able to do to it to do it you know? right right so. because because they've got mitch mcconnell there to make sure that it doesn't, it doesn't happen. happen yeah yes, yeah McDonald's isn't so i, I threw that out to you ben as something you could defend the mayor on the mayor is on the right side on the uh, minimum wage thing right well you know i 
grass. He's on the right side. <laughs> I haven't seen him do anything for it. You know, he's got a bully pulpit. Uh, but uh, whatever. Yes. Yes. The mayor's right, on the here's, right side. Here's something that just radically changing. The, the, the book, uh, the uh, Gates book, mm -hmm. is out, I think, today is the first day of publication, uh, which, of course, is very critical of uh, our president. Um, but the, the, po the period during which he's he's talking when he was Secretary of Defense is a period that coincides with when our beloved mayor was the Chief of Staff for the President of the United States. Mm -hmm. um, do you see any connections there? Is there, is there anything that can be drawn from that? Does, is, is this criticism also a criticism of Rahm Emanuel or not? Well, the, I haven't read the book. And, uh, the, <clears throat> well, none of us have. Yeah, remember, so. yeah, the, the article I read in the, was the New York Times yesterday uh, curiously did not mention uh, Mayor Emanuel. You know, he was a... Or the it, Chicago team. Yeah, yeah. In, in a way that yeah. that uh, Lynn Sweet does today. Mm -hmm. Lynn Sweet actually has a great column in oh, Bright she One. Oh, yeah. yeah. um, I haven't read the Bright One and, yet today. And including talking with Axelrod and others about what's really going on. I mean, did she? Wait, she talks about the book. General did they, Gates, did he, do I call him that? Uh, actually, got some stuff wrong. Mm -hmm. Even in <clears> meetings <throat> he apparently was in, he got the summary of what happened, at least according to other folks, not quite right. Yeah. He really blasts Joe Biden. Says he's not been correct for forty, 40 years. Forty years, right? And you know. <clears throat> You may fault Joe for some um, um, positions over the years, but not everyone's been wrong over 40 years. Um, so I, I think I think Gates is trying to sell some books, and they, his editors found something to tease out. Mm -hmm. And um, when you already have uh, the president coming off a very tough year uh, with lame duck hood maybe settling in sooner uh, earlier than expected, although I feel we'll see what happens after the State of the, uh, the Union address. Um, this minimum wage organizing and other things really seem, the unemployment uh, insurance issue mm -hmm. really seems to have some traction that has mm -hmm. the GOP kind of yeah. uh, running for cover a little bit more than I ever thought they would even six months ago. It does seem like some of the discussion about the wage disparity and the sort of the lost middle class in America seems to be gaining a kind of traction that it hasn't for several years. and. Maybe we've just kind of reached that critical point where people are waking up to that issue, and and it's well, the it's, recession's it's, supposedly over, but most of the middle class doesn't feel that and yet. It's not, it, we the, have those not jobs are not coming back. We've not recovered <clears throat> the thirty percent loss in in home uh, uh, in home equity. Uh, mm -hmm. The jobs that have come back are not great jobs. Mm -hmm. um, the whole vote around the Boeing engineers on uh, uh, construction thing was really. Um, uh, a setback, yeah, it was uh, a very uh, and a very interesting dynamic for the middle too. class. Yeah. I don't even want to get into <clears throat> yeah. union, non-union, or whatever. Right, that right. the floor that union organizing traditionally has provided since the depression mm -hmm. has been disappearing, mm -hmm. and that's why the minimum wage becomes that much more important because it's been stagnant. Right. But even even that is just temporizing. Um, the the unemployment insurance thing is particularly incredible to me because. That is a direct infusion in the economy, which we clearly still need. Mm -hmm. Every one of those bucks gets mm -hmm. spent. They get spent, today right, right. On stuff right. people need, and that drives, you know, with 60, 70 percent of our economy dependent on consumer spending, mm -hmm. seems to me that's a pretty inexpensive investment for this. You know, heavily in debt, mm -hmm. although I, declining debt, federal government rapidly declining. Tom, you sound like a lefty. Um, really? <laughs> what do you have so many lefty friends? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I have to say that um, that the, the well, anyway, yeah, I, the, there were a bunch of things I was going to add to that, but we could we could go on for hours about the minimum wage, but particularly the thing about the um, uh, unemployment insurance. I mean, th there's there's just ample evidence that that money just goes immediately into the environment. As soon as you give it to somebody, they got to go buy groceries. Mm -hmm. But it was started you, by Bush, the first one in a previous recession, yeah, yeah. three, four recessions ago. And when you give an investment banker a million dollar bonus, that mm -hmm. money does not go into right. the economy. Exactly. It just sits somewhere. Unless, unless you're buying a third home. Right, right. Or a fourth so limo. I, I don't know. I, I, it's something that I don't understand, and 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 I really do not understand the austerity position that uh, that this has to be offset with something else. Because it seems to me that what you're doing is you're taking that money. It's almost a tax cut in a way. You're taking tax money and giving it to people who will then spend it on groceries and clothes. Isn't that a fairly but, but conservative you know position? You're, you're, um, uh, what you're describing is happening at the national level is also happening uh, on the local level. It's just one of my many obsessions about how we invest 
relatively little money we have. We don't have as nearly as much money uh, to play around with uh, with the city of Chicago or even the state of Illinois as the, the federal government does. But um, I think our um, local investments uh, not skewed correctly, and it's, it's part of the reason I'm always pounding the drum on charter schools. They pay their teachers less. Mm -hmm. These are public dollars, mm -hmm. and um, that are going directly into Chicago because mm -hmm. Chicago teachers have to live in the city. So every time right. you, right. well, charter school teachers don't have to live in the city. So they you mm -hmm. take moving the dollars, not only are they getting less, but they're moving them out of the city. So mm -hmm. I see it's the same uh, same situation that you're describing happening on the local level. We, we would be remiss if we didn't spend a few minutes, Ben, talking about some of the pieces you've written recently about Mayor Emanuel setting up a process to make sure that the public process is the process that the mayor wants the process to be. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's, it's really and well which done. public is he referring <laughs> to? Yeah. Well, the mayor's determined um, for reasons that uh, we could speculate about for all day uh, that he's going to transfer um, schools from union eyes workforce, which are the regular public schools, to a non-union workforce, which is the charter schools. Um, I, my personal belief is that, that that union dynamic is at the heart of his why he's doing what he's doing. There's certainly no proof that charter schools do any better than union schools at uh, teaching kids. So in order to do that, though, there are rules and regulations that you have to follow so you're just not uh, replicating uh, the hired truck scandal with schools where you're just mm -hmm. like giving money out to the mm -hmm. guys who are in the back of the room. So you, the mayor set up this process where the, the community would um, sort of like uh, have a say in uh, determining whether the, uh, these various charter school applicants are uh, worthy of receiving money. And then the way the procedure was set up essentially um, guaranteed that the charter schools would get the sign off for the money. So as you're saying, he set up a process uh, to guarantee the outcome he wanted all along, which is sort of how democracy goes in the city of Chicago. It's uh, it's, it's worth checking out Ben's work at the Reader. If yeah. You, uh, if you want to at, at a public forum marking the foundation's 25th anniversary yesterday at the auditorium, the Polk Brothers Foundation, uh, the school CEO was one of the panelists. And um, she was making all sorts of comments about community engagement and actually referred at one point to when we talk with real parents. I'm not sure what other kinds of parents mm, yeah, use. Yeah, yeah, Those yeah. phony um, parents. But yeah. in the audience are organizers who've lost uh, big time with this transfer and mm -hmm. the lack of considering community engagement. Mm -hmm. AIM School on the northwest yeah. side, the Logan mm -hmm. Square has been organized mm -hmm. and it's being turned in, a uh, middle school is being turned into a military academy. Mm -hmm. um, parent. Uh, training's gone on there, they've been improving enrollment, they've turned that school around and suddenly because an alderman thinks his kids in his ward need good military mm -hmm. discipline, mm -hmm. they've totally wiped out community self-determination mm -hmm. and dropped an expanded well, military Let's academy. not even get started on the community involvement with the closing of the 50 schools oh, with yeah. all the hearings. So we can get 23 new charters. Yes, yeah, right, so we get right. 20, yeah, so what mm -hmm. you do is you close regular schools and then you open charters and it's it, what you, you you turn the workforce from uh, union to non-union, and then you're right. It, it, I'm probably the well, no, you guys are old enough to remember the silent majority. It's uh, President Nixon said that there's a silent majority of people who support what I want. So, I, pretty much every mayor of Chicago has said something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, the people in this room are outraged, but. The great vast majority of people who don't bother to show up and aren't paying attention really like Ben, I, I've really wanted, I've just been really aching to get you on the show for a while to ask you about whether you've changed your position a little bit now because um, you've always just gone on and on and on about TIFFs and how bad they are and all that. Yeah. And now we see that uh, the mayor is basically doing exactly what you wanted. He's putting TIFFs into the schools, just like you've been screaming for all this time. He's yeah. invested a huge amount of money yeah. at uh, Peyton uh, and, <laughs> and, and, and so, Cooley and all these other yeah. yeah. So isn't that exactly what you yeah. wanted? Jones, and, and Jones. Jones. this year. Yeah. And before he building. did it, he called me up. He yeah. goes, look, Ben, <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. Would you sign on to this? Right, yeah. Uh, I didn't see you write a column supporting this, though. So. Uh, no, you mean supporting the mayor? Yeah. I'm, I'm, again, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. constantly constantly searching for ways I know, I know, I in which know. I could, but um, I actually did write at one point, uh, I was sort of tongue in cheek, um, uh, that uh, the mayor is, what he's doing, and he's pretty good at this, giving him praise, See, right? praise, right. praise so for For instance, Jones, you, you mentioned Jones. You yes. Mean, okay, uh, the mayor, the original idea was that they were going to, there's 
they built a new Jones, which left the old Jones, the old building, mm -hmm. uh, which is the traditional uh, school, which is right there on State Street for years, uh, so vacant. What are you going to do with that? So Fioretti, the local alderman, and a lot of the, the residents had turned it into a neighborhood school. Right. Mayor Rahm's first instinct was to tear it down, probably to sell it to some developer. It's valuable. It's to, valuable you know, real estate now. Yeah. Land. Um, but there was such a hue and cry from the community that he backed off on that. And he realized that it was probably in his greater political self-interest to preserve it. So instead of turning it into a neighborhood school, he expanded this, the, what I call a smart kid school. You got to have really good grades to get in. Uh, so in other words, he sort of gave them what they wanted. Uh, it's school as mm -hmm. opposed to a skyscraper, mm -hmm. uh, an office skyscraper. Mm -hmm. And then he took all the credit for it. So this is kind of what he's doing in some cases with the TIF money. Instead of just giving the money back to the Board of Ed so that they could spend it um, like it's part of their annual capital planning process or whatever thing. Or, or, or just to buy toilet paper, which right. they seem to be incapable <laughs> of purchasing at many schools, or to maybe hire a, a few music teachers or art, yeah, teachers. art teachers. What he does is says, I'll spend that money on selective school projects that I think are in the city's best interest. So again, the public's cut off. Uh, there's, it's just. You're saying there's no process? Yeah, no well, reason? it's a process. <laughs> it's the mayor's process. It's like we every have, other process. We, we have a daddy knows best mayor. Yeah, yeah we and have this a, is just another example. So of yeah, so oh, he, well, we've always had daddy knows best mayors. I mean, it goes back 50 years. Well, Harold, so. the great Harold Washington. Okay, you know, all right. You know, okay. I know, right. God. Yeah, I, I forgot there the was that. Days. I forgot yeah. a little. Yeah. 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 So anyway, so. Uh, yeah, he's essentially realized that the TIF money is his to spend as he wants, and he's, so part of what he wants to spend it on are selective schools. And actually, there's an argument, a very good argument to be made that you shouldn't build any more schools because the real problem is an operating budget problem. Mm -hmm. You don't have enough money to run the schools you have. Right. Right. So you should be using that to, uh, to some, well, but uh, your you know, two hundred and eighty million dollars uh, went to uh, just. Uh, to just the um, UNO schools in the last five <laughs> well, years. Well, yeah, none so, of it was TIF money, but yeah, you're, that's yeah. another point. Well, that, that's the charter schools. So should uh, Miguel Descoto get his job back? He wants to be the head of UNO again. Would you Would you support him? Yes, I, I would. And if, if you're watching, Miguel, I didn't think you should have been fired in the first place. The, the UNO scandal, as you know, is that uh, Miguel was the number two man. I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, Juan Rangel is the number one man, but mm -hmm. it was uh, when the UNO was uh, doling out contracts to various contractors, uh, companies owned by Miguel's brothers got the contracts. So uh, when it was his outrage, the number two man's brothers are getting the contracts, they fired the number two man. They didn't fire the number one man. <laughs> well, they did eventually. Well, eventually. Yeah. It took a while. We, so uh, we, I, I have a little sympathy for Miguel. Yeah. Well, good. Thanks. We have to go. Can you believe it? No, like we, how about that? We, we've done it again. And we didn't even get to Carrie Austin saying that the crime stats are crap in the, in the Next time. news Next today. Time. Next time. You've been watching Chicago Newsroom. It's a community service of Can TV, and we are so glad that you are watching it on 30-year-old Can TV, and hope you'll continue to watch all of our live stuff and all the other cool stuff. But if you want to watch us, all you got to do is go to this address anytime, and you can see it right here uh, on YouTube, and we hope you will do that. Tom Clark, thank you so much for being thank here again. Ben Jarovsky, thank you so much for being here again. We will, of okay. course, have them back many, many, many more times. I'm Ken Davis. See you next week. Whether you like it or not, we'll try to do a better job next week. Thanks. Bye.